Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is about the cheaper LS heads that were tested on my LS 408 cubic inch engine and how they did in the comparison. So for those that are unfamiliar, I have several dyno mule engines that I use for testing and one of them happens to be an LS. It's a 408 cubic inch engine, not 4.8, 408 cubic inches. 430 bore, four inch stroke. Depending on the head, usually it's about 11 and a half to one compression ratio in a hydraulic roller camshaft. The standard or base cam that I use for most of the testing to compare different heads is a one you guys can easily get. It's not even a custom one. It's a Texas Speed Stage 2. And it's worked out relatively well. Yes, there are other cams that have done better than that in the Dino Mule, but that was one of the first cams I had, and that's the reason I tested it with pretty much every one of the cylinder heads that I had, so we use that as the baseline. Would the numbers maybe have changed with a more aggressive cam? Maybe, but this is a pretty good cam. It definitely makes some pretty good steam, which you'll see from the horsepower numbers I'm going to show you. But these are just four of the heads that got tested, and these are probably some of the cheaper heads that were tested. So cheap is always a relative term depending on how you use it. So we'll go with probably the cheaper one to get. This is a set of 243s, which I'll show you in a second. I'll grab the camera. But this is a set of 243s. You can get these from Facebook Marketplace. Now I did port these, so that obviously adds to the cost of the head, but these ones are ported 243s. And really the question is, well, how does those stack up then? Because this is a cathedral port head, the 243s, to say these 823s, which are a rectangular port LS3, because that's probably the, the really actually the cheapest one. These are 823s. All I did was valve job them and blend the valve job and mill them. In other words, pretty much just to freshen them up. Those are the next ones. And then this one, which I'll, I'm gonna grab the camera so you can see it better. This is a set of the AFR LS3 Enforcer heads. So this is their cheaper line. AFR makes some really nice CNC heads. Their LS3 Mongoose head is really great. And yes, I've done a comparison between that and this Enforcer. The power difference is dramatic. But anyway, this is their cheaper one. It's the ASCAST head. And lastly, this is the Promax small bore LS3 head. They have a large bore that's also tested. They cost the same, I should point out, but the small bore does make more power and we'll kind of show why. So let me grab the camera. I'll kind of give you a little quick overview of the heads and we'll just show you the dyno numbers. Here are the 243s. Like I say, they're a cathedral port. They are ported. This is exactly how they ran. They have a 202 intake valve and I think it's a 1550 exhaust valve. On the flow bench, they flow right about 309. Not bad. Worked out relatively well. These are the enforcers that tore down because this is after getting ported. I have redone the valve job, but they were as cast exactly as you would have got them from AFR when I dyno tested them, but this is how they look. They have a 208 intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. Their chambers are relatively large. I want to say it's in the 70 cc range. So, and then these are just the 823s. Uh, again, these were ran, but I've blasted them since because I'm going to do the port work on this and re dyno it after porting these. But these are 823s, 2125 or 2165 intake valve, 1590 exhaust valve. Again, all I did was just valve job and blend. So just, and surface them just to clean them up, just like a refresh job. Very, very generic. Um, and then these are the Promax small bore LS3 heads. These have a 208 intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. Now, the big thing about this head, and this was a difference from all the rest, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, this one by far was the best. Of all the heads tested, period, every single one, this one with that Texas Speed Stage 2 camshaft has been the best. This one right here. And the biggest reason, and this is the main reason for it, and yes, I'm going to do another video on this, it's compression. These heads have two chamber sizes. You can have them either in 58 or 63 cc's. However, when I cc'd the very first one, which should have been 58, it was 56. That means these, like this one was like 11. This was higher because the 243 has a smaller chamber but this one was like 11.6. Uh, the AFR was 11.0 or 10.9, and that was about the same, the 823. This, 13 something to one. So huge difference and mostly, and this just bolted on, it's the chamber, that smaller chamber, more compression. It makes more power. Because of that compression, it beat literally every head, even the CNC LS3 Mongoose head. But of all these heads, I'll show you the dyno results. And really, it's only going to have these three. Because so I'll go ahead and tell you, this 823 was only four horsepower down 
from this one, the AFR LS3 Enforcer. Four or three horsepower, same with torque. Wasn't a huge difference. You could swap them back and forth, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. So, but anyway, let me show you the dyno results. Here are the dyno results. And like I said, the only thing that's not on here is the 823. And if you want to think about it, it makes just slightly more than the AFR Enforcer. And that is the black line. So red line being the Promax small bore, blue line being the ported 243s. So we can kind of get an idea. If you look at it, I'm going to go ahead, for those that are driving, you can't see this. The red line, which is the Promax small bore LS3, it's dominating. At yeah, the lower RPMs, we started like at 3,800. Um, it's still better. It's not that much better than the ported 243s, but it is better. That is somewhat shocking because it's about a point compression difference in the lower RPM. So you thought that would gain more torque there, but not really. But once you get above 4,700, the difference is noticeable dramatically. So it ends up making 678 horsepower with those Promax small bore. And remember, that's, that's how they pretty much come. There's not much done to them at all. I did have to redo the valve job. I forgot about that. I redid the valve job only because they didn't seal. I didn't do any port work with those. Um, but 678 horsepower, yeah, compression is worth way more than flow. Then you look at the AFR Enforcer, that's this black line. It had the worst torque. It, the 243s that are ported beat it on torque. There's not until 5200 RPM where the um, AFR Enforcer LS3 heads actually make more power than the ported 243s. And then beyond that, they do, and just slightly. So the 243s end up peaking about 6, I think this is 628, and the AFR Enforcer made 634. So it's, it's quite a bit of a difference. And the, in case you're wondering, the 823s would fall right in the middle of this between the two. Still nowhere near what those uh, Pro Max do because of the small chamber. But point being is if you have a set of 243s and you're debating about whether to switch over to the um, um, LS3 style head with a rectangular port, if you're mostly street driving, you're going to make, and you port those, you're going to make way more torque at the lower RPMs. And it isn't really, like I said, until 5250 or 5200 until you actually are going to gain more having the bigger LS3 style head. So especially if you just do put a stock one on there compared to the ported 243s, they're really close, but you make way more torque down low. Part of that is because it has slightly more compression with a 243 than you do with this, um, an LS3 style head because of the chamber size. But you could tell once the chamber size gets really small, then the Pro Max is, that's the reason why they did so good. But anyway, there you go. You got something out of it, hopefully. Um, guys, remember I am no Superman. I did raise Superboy. I do not port cast iron heads. I do not respond to Facebook or Instagram messages. The best way to get a hold of me is through email, which is winegunnerracing at gmail.com. You guys take care.